NCDC started um, and it appeared that all he did initially was respond to outbreaks. The 2011 was actually on paper when we received a circular while in the Ministry of Health that some divisions, some unit sections have been collapsed to start NCDC. At the beginning, we had the NCDC and I must pay tribute to several individuals who worked in the Federal Ministry of Health, particularly in the Department of Public Health. What drove me into fast tracking the establishment of the NCDC had to do with my visit to Public Health England as well as the US Center for Disease Control. And I was quite impressed about their fit, the, 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 the presence of a viable, active uh, institution that could function 24 7 to address public health challenges in these countries uh, really gave me the knowledge. Uh, and, and served as a stimulus uh, for the first tracking of the decision to establish the Nigerian Center for Disease Control. NCDC started out as a unit supervised by the Department of Public Health in the Federal Ministry of Health. It started with a room or two in the ministry and later this building that we are occupying today as the administrative headquarters was given to the um, agency. I remember most of us saying they are not interested. They are not interested in going to any agency. They want to remain with the core ministry. For me, I wasn't really um, enthusiastic about moving into NCDC at that time. Those of us that came from the Ministry of Health were less than 100. That's how we became of NCBC. Before then, we were at the ministry and we didn't really have a direction at that time because we were all confused. There wasn't anything on ground. We were just a few of us that were there and uh, uh, we, we were not even sure of where we were going. We were just struggling to be on our feet. The lab was a moribund lab, dilapidated building, not much happening. The facility here, which is the NRL Gadua, has not been put to shape. And at the same time, the same time we did not have one particular uh, office. As at this time, the building was virtually empty without any possible uh, equipment to work with. We were just working without knowing our faith. That process continued until um, the year 2016. In 2016, August, we got a new national coordinator and CEO for NCDC. Dr. Chikwe Iyekwazu was appointed as the new then chief executive officer of NCDC. To be honest, when I got the call, I did think about not accepting, but um, I was swayed by two things primarily. Yeah? Um, firstly, in fact three. The firstly was that we always complain about why Nigeria is not working, and I've done that myself severally. So when you're finally put in that position, it's very difficult to then say no. Secondly is, I had worked in National Public Health Institutes all my life, so even though at that material point I might not have been ready for the appointment, I felt that my career so far had prepared me for something like this. And, and thirdly, which was probably the most difficult, is that I really did not have the time <laughs> to say no. So I was excited when I was appointed about that potential. Um, which was a, a bit deflated, obviously, when I, I arrived and met what we found on ground. It, 
in 2011, the NCDC was, um, uh, was established as an agency of the federal government of Nigeria, and then Central Public Health Lab was incorporated into NCDC. Prior to 2016, that before talking about before the appointment of the DG, no staff of CPHL was trained on molecular diagnosis. Then in 2017, there was this outbreak of uh, cerebrospinal meningitis that was happening in the north. And then, just yeah, before then, I know that uh, he has. One day I met with him. He was now like, "Will I be?" If I am moved to Abuja, will I be able to come? Because that uh, he cannot do surveillance without uh, having a lab, and that there is no lab as we speak in Abuja. The only lab available that time was the Porter Cabin that we are using for influenza surveillance. That was in Asokoro. But then we moved some of the equipment that were meant for influenza diagnosis from this uh, National Influenza Reference Lab which happened to be cited, was cited then at uh, Asokoro District Hospital. We then moved so all, some of this, all this equipment to uh, the National Reference Lab Gadua today. The first thing that greeted him into the office was the first uh, cholera heartbreak, which we had in 2017. That, at that time, there wasn't like uh, EOC, we don't have any EOC, we don't have anybody. There was nothing like infection prevention and control program in the country before 2018. Many of the staff, though we're very few at that moment, the few staff that were available were sent out for training uh, in most of these developed countries, especially in Europe and the United States of America, as well as even in Japan. So in terms of infrastructure, a massive renovation and reconstruction of CPHL was embarked upon in order to have a fit for purpose laboratory and to also create a safe and conducive workplace for members of staff. We started uh, establishing AOC. You know, at that time, there wasn't even any money. We, we don't have anything. So with his present, many partners started coming in. And that was how we started, you know, uh, building uh, SCDC. And we started working with health facilities, with state governments, to see how we can prevent the spread of infectious diseases, especially among healthcare workers. So healthcare-associated infections were our target and we wanted to slow that down. We now started building uh, public health emergency operation centers in each of the uh, states of the Federation. So as we speak now, we have at least one uh, PHEOC in each of the states of the Federation. Some do even have two. The Director General that we have knows the importance of every aspect of work that is being done in the lab knows that it is critical that for us to be able to function seamlessly that there is need to have an equipment hub. We faced a lot of challenges in terms of equipment installation, equipment preventive maintenance, equipment handling, training of end users on proper use of equipment. So this was a very big gap that uh, the management of NCDC through the leadership of Dr. Chikwe Ihekwazu identified and started putting resources together to be able to bridge this gap because we realized that uh, these same challenges is being faced across the country. He uh, observed that there is a need to bring together all the laboratories, the, the laboratories that uh, have been assisting or collaborating in one way or the other with the NCDC. And this led to the formation of uh, the laboratory consortium. Uh, when he joined, and ever since he joined, he mapped out a uh, strategy uh, for those laboratories on how the laboratories are to develop and expand. 
I remember back in 2018, we started on a on a on a project to um, look to strengthen and ensure that there was adequate funding for the uh, for NCBC and all the public health responses in the country. And we did a vox pop asking Nigerians what they knew about NCBC and what they knew about infectious diseases and how important it was. And at the time, nobody had any inkling or had any understanding that we even had a public health institute to respond to infectious disease outbreak. One thing we know is communications plays in a very, very critical part in ensuring and informing people and raising awareness about different issues. So from the very onset, communications was a very important pillar in um, an NCDC. Our priorities include um, building trust and then letting people understand the position of the organization as an agency that has a mandate for protecting the health of Nigerians. When, I, when we met what we were confronted with, we knew we had a little window to distinguish ourselves and to deliver on our mandate. So we had to work on many things in parallel, you know. We had to be ready for the outbreaks when they came and they did come hard and fast. We had to build at the same time, recruit rapidly, put them into functional departments and organize them. We had to win over the back, the trust of Nigerians uh, on the work that we did. And we had to win over the trust of the ministry that had set us up in the first place. And we had to do all of these in parallel. The NFELT team, under the leadership of Dr. Patrick Nguku, also supported a lot. The first year, I know I worked with Dr. Chipwe very closely to think about the existing strategic plan that time and what needed to be done to ensure that it's operationalized. There wasn't anything like an organizational structure. So that was the time when TBI came in, that is uh, to, uh, to the Blair Institute. We were all involved. We went for the meeting. We had a vision and mission. Prior to that, we never had a mission and vision. We just know that there was NCDC. And but, you know, with his coming in and his passion and his dynamic way of work, he he brought out that vision and mission for NCDC and from there we were able to derive our strategic goals and from the strategic goals we were also able to build and have our objectives and so each department now started having structures started having you know a feel of belonging our relationship started with Dr. Chikwe, having had experience of working with uh, TBI colleagues during the Ebola crisis in Sierra Leone and Liberia, once we started working with Dr. Chikwe and the NCDC, we realized that this would be a special um, experience for all of us. That would be a transformation journey like no other because it had all the elements that would make a successful transformation journey. A young organization with a heavy mandate a political leader with a good vision and people who were interested in supporting that leader to transform his vision into reality. We've been collaborating with the uh, Nigeria Centre for Disease Control since even before I joined and I want to go back a little bit because uh, the project itself, the project lead, was quite instrumental in working with the then small team of NCDC that was being led by uh, Dr. Ihe Kwazu in 2017, I think, in terms of actually trying to pull together a strategy for the Nigeria Center for Disease Control. We worked on codifying the strategy for the next five years. Where did NCDC want to go? How did it want to achieve this vision? And we did that by developing a strategy which developed into the five-year strategy that we call the idea to reality. Subsequent to the development of that strategy, I think that really helped to coalesce support, particularly from partners like ours. Because then 
we could see the direction of travel, even though it was still something in the future. But we could see where we could fit in in terms of our various programs. In our dealings with partners, donors, NGOs, the first question we get is, um, can we see the legal instrument upon which your organization is operating? What are your mandates? What are your functions? The biggest challenge at that time was the legal framework any institution that is in existence without legal backing is to that extent non-existing, if we should say so. There is no much confidence as to whether the agency will even exist or not. Partners were reluctant to work with us uh, considering the huge mandate given. The process of getting a legal instrument for NCDC otherwise would have been a long and tedious one, but for the tenacity and the never give up um, attitude of um, Dr. Chikwe Ihekrezu. He knew he wanted a legal instrument to operate on. As such, he gave it all. So the first thing Dr. Chikwe did was to go to the drawing board, come up with a draft bill for an act to establish Nigeria Center for Disease Control. We started the bill that eventually became the act. There was a lot of back and forth when it comes to the bill. Non-agreements and um, other people in the ministry, other players, did not agree with some of the things, so it kept going back and forth. He worked on it diligently. He pushed, as the famous, uh, as he always states, keep pushing. Worked with the legislators worked with partners, worked with the ministry, with the agencies. We worked 247 every day. He brought his uh, team. Um, he helped us with the legal department of the National Assembly. So we saw this bill becoming a reality. And as is usual with bills, it went through first reading and on the second reading, it was um, communicated to the House, uh, to, this, uh, to my committee to handle. After the second reading, we went as a committee, then we had public hearing where uh, all the agencies, ministries, uh, private organizations, associations were invited. Many of us in Nohafe, like giving up, we never saw that bill coming at that year. In 2018, the Act Establishing Nigeria Center for Disease Control was passed by the National Assembly and assented to by President Mohamed Obwari. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control Act of 2018 established NCDC as Nigeria's foremost public health institute, charged with the business of preventing, detecting, monitoring, control of communicable diseases to generally protect the health of Nigerians. We came out with well analyzed bill that was acceptable as a then to other institutions both within and outside this uh, country. Having that bill passed um, gave us the legal framework to operate and since the uh, passing of the act in 2018 a lot has happened. That's when uh, we began to have the confidence of Nigerians we began to have the confidence of international partners, the local NGOs that are in the field of public health. Partners were more willing to support us and talk to us because of this document, the Nigeria Center for Disease Control Act 2018. It further gave confidence to the staff of the center, knowing fully well that this center now has a full legal mandate to operate 
the staff became more emboldened in discharging the work they do around disease control. In 2018, uh, precisely 13 November 2018, when the act was signed by Mr. President, uh, Dr. Yeko Azu became the first director general of the Nigerian Center for Disease Control. One of the most important bits was getting our bill signed off into an act by Mr. President. Because these are some of the things that people don't understand how hard it is. And we managed to navigate our national assemblies. It's not somewhere I think I have a particular strength or experience in, but we learned. We learned how to do the hard things as well as the technical things. So getting that bill through um, the houses of uh, as, uh, the House of Reps and the Senate, and getting it to Mr. President to sign it off, and giving us the the mandate to do the critical work we did, was a, a great highlight for me. We were monitoring the um, disease situation in the country, it was routine. We had the monthly reporting, we had the weekly reporting, we had immediate reporting. But all this, we were using paper-based. Reporting, sometimes for the monthly, sometimes before you get the report, it comes in at a very late time. So, uh, for surveillance, the transition has been moving from that paper-based reporting to electronic-based reporting. Now, that electronic-based reporting is the SOMAS. It's called SOMAS. It's Surveillance Outbreak Response and Management Analysis System. It was introduced, actually, in 2016. We started the process. We did a pilot. Now, SOMAS came in as a baby from when we had the Ebola outbreak. The data management during that time was very flat. I mean, it was just collect data and then collate it, do some flat analysis. And then uh, we had a team from Germany that came in and uh, looked at what we were doing. And you know, we worked with them and we agreed that we needed a platform that could help us not only to collect the data, but to also manage the, uh, the situation, outbreaks. NCDC would always tell you and the staff, SOMAS is our primary database, and this is what we're going to use. Even when many partners bring in different electronic systems, they would always ask, can this fit into SOMAS? How do we ensure that SOMAS works? So having that focus, on a system that they want to build up and they wanted to build up pathologies was critical for the program. Over the years we realized that Infection prevention and control is actually one of those opportunities that NCDC as an organization will find itself to be in the middle of um, strengthening the Nigerian health system, making it more resilient, and then improving our health security. And the first thing we did was strategically to position NCDC as the organization to provide national leadership in infection prevention and control in the country. And the strategy we took was to take up the strategy of the WHO core components of infection prevention and control. And what that core component basically provides for is that there should be an infection prevention and control program at the national level and infection prevention and control at um, health facility level. And this was the strategy we took in the, what we called the Turn Nigeria Orange Strategy.
We never had any coordination platform in Nigeria for infectious disease management. He now started by bringing partners from outside the country, public health England. I, we owe them a lot because they came here and helped us to develop most of these documents we are using. USCDC and other relevant stakeholders that were adequately equipped on EOC. We had what we call emergency relief grants and that grant was used for establishment of national EOC and sub-national EOCs and laboratory networks and all that. So we started with that and after the establishment of the EOC in second quarter of 2000, 2018 in Zamfara, it was, it was so encouraging. Then after Zamfara, within that year, we established Bayesa, we established Cross River, we established Enugu, we established um, Abia, uh, we established uh, Ebony States, and Dito other states. Then we never had any EOC in the country. Officer at the National EOC NCDC. The EOC operates in three modes. During the watch mode, we monitor all our dashboards and screens for new signals. During alert mode, for example, this is the Lassa fever dashboard. When cases are increasing, we move from watch mode to alert mode and subsequently to the response mode where we activate an EOC. Before COVID 19 pandemic, we are used to the operations of the EOC because EOC has proven to be a very good model for effective coordination of information and efficient resource management to support incident management activities of any type of incident. At the arrival of the new DG, this is Dr. Chikwe. We have just two mini stores. We have paper documentation for information ma infantry management. No established transportation systems. And as we move on in revamping the entire systems, we develop a roadmap. And in that roadmap, we have a set objective in revamping the supply chain systems, we have the strategic directions, and then we have the intervention that will guide us through. And as time went on, we were able to draft a medical countermeasure plan with the help of the JEE that took place in 2017. As we continue to walk through the plan, we now had the a pandemic, which is COVID-19. COVID-19 came with different challenges, increase in the need for the emergency supply, uh, emergency stock to be deployed to different subnational levels. And at the point of doing that, we need to increase our level of collaborations. We increase the scope of the collaboration with other partners. So with the help of the United States uh, Center for Disease Control, we put together a medical countermeasure plan alongside other partners and uh, stakeholders like the Ministry of Health, the um, state epidemiologists, a few of them were part of that draft plan. The um, public health in England was part of it, and um, Affinet was part of it, and um, Resolve to Save Lives. So we did put a plan together, and that informed our uh, getting a bigger space for warehousing of materials that we were going to procure. Um, we had to draft guidelines to uh, support the plan. We had to draft SOPs because we didn't have standard operating procedures for receiving items, for issuing out those items. So gradually we grew from that one flat where we stockpiled all of our products to having 
three additional warehouses. From not having any system in terms of transportation, using the ambulance to the stage of collaborating with different agencies and using some of their transportation system to move the commodity during the pandemic, to the stage of collaborating with the National Road Transportation System, and now we now have a robust top party logistics system. We were initially buying few stock. We grew to the ministry supporting us with more stock and subsequently partners supporting us heavily with a lot of stock. And during the course of the journey, we now develop, we now have a logistic information management system that can be used to manage the entire commodities, hand-to-hand -hand visibilities, and it's not stumbling alone, it's a web page that everybody can see the information and you can interact with the read data and you can use it for informed decisions. We've also put some cold chain facilities in six geopolitical zones and in the National Reference Laboratory to support the storage of cold chain materials. Technologies were upgraded and we were trained and retrained. And with all of this training, when COVID pandemic came, I was able to manage the Connect Center effectively. With the very few database of like five staff coming to over a hundred staff during the pandemic, we were able to gather information, analyze data interpret the data to make public health actions for response to COVID-19 pandemic and other public health diseases. of health workers was one of the most important things I would need to equally uh, emphasize. What NCPC has been able to do with the support of a lot of its partners and YAD um, is ensuring that the workforce were able to get training not just in Nigeria but also in other countries. As Affinet, uh, in the last 13 years, we've worked very closely with the Federal Ministry of Health Federal Ministry of Agri, uh, the universities, Amadou Bello University and the University of Ibada, as well as the USCDC to establish the Nigerian Field Epidemiology Training Program. And what NCDC did was to give visibility to this program, because this program is about production of skilled workforce. Many technical staff of CPHL were trained both nationally and internationally to enhance the leadership and technical skills in areas that are re relevant to their professional development. We have been working in the, uh, in the concerted effort to ensure that we build health workers at all the state's level. I've had um, numerous learning opportunities 
and training opportunities, both within and outside of the country. I've been trained properly on uh, handling medical laboratory equipment, installation, calibrations, maintenance. I've also been trained on biosafety cabinet certification and I'm NSF certified. I was uh, trained uh, and also had exposure to go to other countries to see how their um, emergency response works. I was in the uh, China Center for Disease Control and I really learned lessons in how the uh, Chinese respond to their outbreaks and uh, brought back the reports to the DG. We've been trained on QuickBook, we've been trained on Excel, we've been trained on budget preparation and this is actually to enhance our, our work and also to achieve NCDC core objective. I have benefited from several uh, local and international training opportunities. Shortly after my NYSC, I was nominated for a public health emergency management training in Nairobi, Kenya. I remember vividly how my dad was so shocked that someone as young as I was in the system was considered for a foreign training. Uh, not long after, I have uh, gone to UK and then to Japan for further training. I am currently pursuing my MPH, Master of Public Health degree in South Korea on a fully funded scholarship, all courtesy of NCDC. So as the NCDC has grown, we have grown with it. Partnerships and funding have been very fundamental and crucial uh, for NCDC in delivering its programs. When we talk about partnership, NCDC is actually the epitome of what it means to partner between organizations. Building partnership is a key um, aspect of the NCDC um, mandate because the NCDC cannot achieve the health security of Nigerians all alone. The US CDC has been working with NCDC since NCDC started in inception around 2011-2012. The then US country director for Nigeria, um, Dr. Okeo Mwaya, was really keen on seeing how US CDC could partner with NCDC to strengthen them and to build their capacity, as has been done in so many CDCs all over the world. I think we have benefited very much with the strong partnership we've had with um, NCDC. And I think that is really from uh, the DG's view and vision in the sense of the fact that Nigeria needs to be a partner. I remember the very first uh, workshop, one of the first series of workshops, we made it very clear to partners, including us, that decisions about NCDC should be made with NCDC, not without NCDC. And I think that's what has been the driving force going forward, because then partners would then need to fall behind the vision and the strategy of NCDC, which we've We've always done. The partnership that I've seen with NCDC over the years, whether it's a $10,000 partnership, whether it's technical assistance partnership, or millions of dollars partnership, NCDC always takes its partners and its collaborators very seriously. These five years, looking at 2016 to 2021, has provided that opportunity for massive retransformation of CPHL. We have added more things into to, into our testing uh, repertoire. We are now even doing whole genome sequencing and next generation sequencing. 
in the lab, and which is part of, you know, the transformation that has happened from inception to where we are today. The lab is well equipped with modern laboratory equipment, and then is now focused on diseases of public health importance, such as yellow fever diagnosis, cholera diagnosis, measles, rubella, and most recently, the COVID-19 diagnosis. There is nothing that we ask for in terms of what we need that will support the work that we are doing that we have received no for. CPHL that, was, that did not comply with good laboratory practices is now fully renovated and upgraded even to meet the needs of the moment. So right now, the staff are well equipped and well motivated to carry out their assigned duties in an enlightened environment. We have come a long way. We have our hiccups, we have our challenges, we have our ups and downs getting the correct skill set for people, getting the correct people. But the story has now changed. And that is evidence in improved testing capacity, improved leadership skills of the management staff of the facility, and so on. Before 2018, there was no research and knowledge management division at the NCDC. We started from zero. Currently, we have a thriving unit with multiple research collaborations and research outputs. It's building our scientific writing skills. Last year alone, we were able to publish close to 15 papers on COVID-19. And we have advanced our capacity even for genomic studies. The COVID-19 pandemic afforded us the opportunity to achieve what had always been one of our key strategic objectives, to build an online infection prevention and control training platform. Another key achievement of um, NCDC in infection prevention and control is that we have developed evidence-based guidelines for infection prevention and control for the country. And this is the National Infection Prevention and Control Manual. Uh, for Nigeria Center for Disease Control, um, we also have come a long way in terms of our communication, whether risk communication or corporate communication. And then our aim is to ensure that uh, we're able to respond to disease outbreak promptly and as well to prevent these diseases and then and then to, to provide accurate information to the people to know what they need to do. Um, during uh, response. And this uh, has a lot, a lot to do with the trust that we build with the people, the confidence that the people have uh, in the organization. We have currently a strong rumor, rumor management system that is based on dynamic listening and systematic evaluation of information, regular scanning of social media networks for trending news and analysis so that we will systematically and scientifically respond to rumors and infodemics. We have adopted an uh, integrated model for risk communication and then that is um, the model that was uh, recommended by World Health Organization and other United Nations agencies and then um, for responding, for providing communication response during outbreaks. And then this is not only during outbreak, but there are activities to do before outbreak, during outbreak, and then after outbreak. The states can now sit comfortably and activate their AOC, put all the necessary gadgets in place, and then work 
as a team. And anytime they have issues, they can contact us through our EOC. We, they don't need to come to uh, Abuja. It's just through the gadget that has been uh, established, uh, that has been uh, uh, given to them, the EOC that was established by us. Then we can talk, we can discuss. Nigeria remains the only country that had such number of subnational PHOCs in the entire Africa country. We've been celebrated for this, even at the level of Seattle, when Bill Gates was impressed and invited us to come and share experiences with other African countries for them to learn from what we are doing. Every Friday, our DG is always having a meeting with uh, state epidemiologists, you know, to know what is actually going on in the state, the problem they are having through this link. And it has been very, very helpful. So those states that are not really performing very well, they will see other states that are performing very well, and they will see the way they are doing their things, and then follow it up. So these activities has been very, very helpful, and this is the reason why you can now hear of NCDC all over the world. We are supporting the states, you know, to respond to this outbreak. A typical example is that of COVID-19. With the advent of COVID-19, the relationship has become a whole lot better. The NCDC has supported us with commodities. They've supported us with consumables that we need to respond to um, outbreaks. We are supporting all the labs in our network for commodities, for equipment, for training, for name it. We support them, we mentor them, we supervise them, we provide for them. We are at their back and call. The COVID pandemic in 2020, we engaged with all partners. We engaged with a range of partners. Uh, and there was a lot of uh, reprogramming. So for example, Gavi reprogrammed some funding, Global Fund reprogrammed some funding in country and even gave additional funds. And the, you know, the contribution to these uh, organizations and other uh, organizations, WHO, UNICEF, the UN system, all that came together and we had at least uh, $74 million worth of materials. From having just uh, uh, a few partners, less than uh, 10, now as I'm talking to you, we have over uh, 50 partners partnering with uh, NCDC. The NCDC of 2017 is very different from the NCDC of 2021. And how have we achieved this? We've ensured that the strategy is at the heart of all we do at the NCDC. We have built organizational structures to support the strategy so that people know what they are supposed to do as part of that overall vision for the NCDC. In the internal organization of the, of the agency, you have institutional structures on ground. And these structures on ground have, over time, uh, become uh, 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 something that everybody, every aspect of the center knows precisely their area of operations, what to do, and all that. And the DG has worked very hard to build a skilled workforce. Without a skilled workforce, uh, emergency can to offer. In the space of three years, we move from less than 100 Today, we are about 500 core staff. We had the opportunity in 2018 to recruit um, 80 additional staff. Um, another set of recruitment was carried out in 2020 with 100 staff sourced and uh, recruited and uh, became part of the staffing. And of course, the biggest one happened this year in 2021 we were given the approval by the head of service, office of the head of service of the Federation to recruit 200 staff. Even Nigerian government's allocation was increased. Funding uh, has been hugely moved from uh, when we have just paltry uh, budgetary allocation. Today we have Although we are not where we want to be, the federal government has improved our budgetary allocation to a very comfortable level. He confronted me with the issue that 
we should try to computerize the office by using what we call QuickBook. As at then, that, that is not my plan to use QuickBook. But I follow him because I saw the kind of person I'm to work with. So he has done what he can and uh, he has given approval for that. And uh, we are now fully digitalized. We can see our working from wherever in the world. And uh, uh, so far, so good from the way we are operating. It's different from what I met here before it was manual way. But now with his support and uh, all those things, we are able to make it now we are fully digitalized. You say continue pushing. When we are pushing, see where we are now. Now we get plenty cars. At least, if I cannot forget, we get more than 35 vehicles now from 2018 to 2021 now. Include Lagos, training, maintenance of our old vehicles, and we are responding able we are with our vehicles. When COVID, when we started hearing in December 2019 about the unusual illness in Wuhan, in China. Of course, knowing that China is just one flight away to Nigeria, we need to put our own house in order because we know that our people are great travelers. Before we could say Jack Robinson, here we are with COVID in our country. Night of 27th, we had our first confirmed case. We worked overnight to ensure that uh, the news goes out uh, quickly. DG was leading in this process and um, everybody, because of the trainings we've had in NCDs, really helped us to manage that process uh, seamlessly. For every outbreak that uh, rapid response teams are deployed to the state, we also have communication members, with communication officials or officers as part of that response. And their own is to work with the state to identify the risk communication needs and through the assessment that they do. And that way, they are able to understand uh, what is lacking, what is their strength, and what they need to do to put up a plan and uh, to be able to respond to the outbreak. Now, as of today we are talking, NCDC has become internationally recognized organization that has been able to fight COVID and other related diseases. As these outbreaks are happening, one after the other, from meningitis, to cholera, to monkeypox, to Lassa fever, to what have you, to where we are today, there is none that comes with without having, you know, its uh, requirements, its needs. And there is nothing that we ask for in terms of what we need that we support the work that we are doing that we have received no for. So every equipment that we have listed that we needed, we are procured. If there's any silver lining in the dark clouds of the COVID-19 pandemic, it was a showcasing of our world-class public health experts at the NCDC. We have achieved uh, so many things in institutional capacity building. We have enjoyed some uh, trainings. We have enjoyed uh, additional staffing. I tell you before now, for instance, in my own section, which is a procurement, we are working on one table. Uh, but today, we have uh, nine uh, staff that are highly qualified and are all of them uh, at, at, actualizing all the uh, various uh, requests and demand of the various departments and units. Although the NCDC is a public institution, we acquired the culture, the culture of the private sector that drives growth, that drives efficiency, and that motivates workers and colleagues to achieve more. We have invested a lot 
in leadership development at every point we recognize that leaders are not just at the top but are at different points of the organization and with other partners we have ensured that ncdc staff management and leadership have opportunities for all sorts of training both technical and leadership we identify youth and their their, their enthusiasm as a potential and a potent power to move uh, NCDC forward. Lots of opportunities are given to young colleagues like us to hold leadership positions and to be able to learn on the job and develop further skills. Coming from a very um, a purely veterinary medical background to a national public health institute, it has been a life-changing experience for me. Um, this is because of the skills I have gained in the last three years working with NCDC. And I owe this to the amazing leadership of the NCDC, um, the mentors, our directors, and senior colleagues. As a founding staff member of the ICC, I have witnessed how the center continuously makes its role clearer in outbreak, rapid outbreak detection and coordination of response activities nationally. My experience has been quite many, but the highlight for me has been the, my contribution to the full operationalization of SOMAS, the Surveillance Outbreak Response Management and Analysis System, and its deployment in all the 36 plus states and 774 LGAs in Nigeria. Working with the prevention programs and knowledge management at the NCDC for the past three years, have availed me the opportunity to be an integral part of the NCDC team with the mandate to develop health promotion and disease prevention teams. When I joined here, I, I didn't know anything, but today I'm the one responsible for distribution. Me and my colleagues are responsible for distribution to uh, all the 36 states plus FCT. I joined NCDC as an intern with little or no capacity, willing to learn on the job, but so far, uh, I've been trained properly on uh, handling medical laboratory equipment, installation, calibration, maintenance. As a young graduate from uh, the university, um, I had very little love for the public service or working with the government. Uh, but NCDC changed that story. Working at NCDC has taught me to be more deliberate in my approach as a public health professional. NCD has helped me in my capacity building, has helped me in exposure, experience and exposure. NCDC has also impacted a lot into my life. It's been really intense, working 12 hours a day, sometimes even more. Um, day in, day out, depends on how intense uh, things go at the office. The bacteriology department in which I work, we have seen ourselves transform or go from the use of conventional diagnostic methods to higher molecular diagnostic techniques in detecting agents that cause infectious diseases. Coming to office, you have that enthusiasm and willingness to come into the lab and work because you know that coming into the lab, you are not going to infect yourself because you have all that it takes to make the work go on smoothly. When I visited the NCDC National Reference Laboratory in January, it wasn't the state of the art equipment, but the all Nigerian cast of talented, knowledgeable and competent scientists who work there that caught my attention. That encounter was very uplifting for me and reaffirmed my belief that we have the human resources to build the high quality institutions that our nation needs. So we took the risk, ready to face the challenges. And I'm happy today that the, the risk that we took really paid off, not only for us, but for the country. They are a force to reckon with, both nationally and globally. 
they are also a force to reckon with in terms of their ability to mount a response on time and to help break transmission, whether it's a chronic disease or a communicable disease. NCDC has contributed not only in making the health system more resilient, it has also contributed in building and improving health security in Nigeria. Being the highest public health institution in the country, it has worked so hard to ensure diseases of public health importance are effectively detected, prevented and controlled. NCDC has grown and is still growing because if we really need to go by what we have in the act, then we should have geopolitical offices. One thing is clear, the vision of the Director General has made it really possible. Leadership is very key in any organization because once that leader is, has that passion and is able to carry along everyone, so that helps you know, in, in building an organization. I must say that a lot of that positive image and sure-footedness of the NCDC was a reflection of the informed, experienced and inspirational leadership provided by the, the Director General, Dr. Chike Ihekwazu. Dr. Chike Ihekwazu has been an extraordinary visionary leader who completely had a great grasp of the mandates. When he started, he really presented himself as a servant leader. You could see a man with an urbane character, urbane character with penchants of excellence and detail. He had a lot of experience. He had, he had worked in England. He brought in also experience from South Africa. So to me and to our colleagues at NCDC, it was a unique opportunity uh, to, to work and develop NC, the capacity of NCDC with someone who is coming in with relevant experience and relevant network that can help Nigeria to develop our capacity for health security and protect uh, the health of the population. He has been a transformational leader in terms of what he's been able to do. He took the uh, agency to another level. From the back seat to, to limelight. There's no doubt about it that his visionary leadership has, you know, um, actually helped to transform the agency. So one of the things that uh, the DG has really ensured is that science, epidemiology, is a basis of all the decisions that uh, NCBC is involved in. Dr. Hikwazu epitomized the emotional intelligence, the wisdom and calmness that public health leadership must possess. His leadership is what really drives and inspires all of us to work so hard and to, 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 to see every task as a challenge that we, we must overcome. He has a way of getting everybody, staff, uh, colleagues, to key into his vision and to uh, inspire the, the zeal of leadership into every staff. I see him as a great leader and a, a mover and shaker of, <laughs> of uh, men and women. He's someone that once you work with him, you must learn. He's a detribalized person and he just looks at who can carry out this task. Like Dr. Shiki always support us to do some things and give us enough support to do many things in case if anything even happen on the road we'll be the one to even ask what and what did you do you people pass through immediately we told him he will respond immediately and some of the times we close 11 o'clock and still leave the dj in the office and you still come back the following morning as early as eight o'clock and you still meet the dj in the office and you wonder if does he really have time for himself? His slogan, keep pushing, has really pushed us 
able to bring the best out of us. I felt honored by Dr. Chikwe when he gave me an award. Extra Miles Award. I I didn't know what to say. Dr. Chikwe Hikwazu wants to leave a footprint wherever he goes. And that is what he has done at NCDC. Dr. Hikwazu led a team of some of the most competent public health officials anywhere in the world. Their expertise, professionalism, and hard work is largely responsible for our nation's globally acclaimed COVID-19 response. COVID-19 came, and uh, we give it to uh, Dr. Chikwe. He was the one that made available all those uh, consumables actually required for us to be able to test uh, those uh, samples initially when we started having suspected cases. NCDC really should be uh, applauded and Dr. Chipper should be applauded for the work that he has done to bring NCDC to where it is. He has brought honor to uh, Nigeria, he has brought honor to Mr. President who you know, appointed him, he has brought honor to Federal Minister of Health, he has brought honor to uh, NCDC, the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, and he has brought honor to himself and his family. I've gotten many, often private correspondence from staff who have grown so much in their confidence and their expertise in the last five years um, and have been so grateful not that i've done anything for them really but we enabled them opportunity to find their own purpose not mine right and they they were happy to come to work every day uh, in in being part of a bigger delivery architecture for health security in nigeria I hope to be personally forgotten very quickly and for the story that should be told and I hope that will be told, it's about the growth of an institution uh, and of which I have played a part and Dio will now play the next part and eventually we'll move it to each other. <laughs>